There's a popular saying that goes, if these walls could talk, they would tell you a story. In the case of the Mission Operation Control Room at NASA's Johnson Space Center, that story would tell of the overwhelming triumphs and challenging moments of America's human spaceflight program. And that voice would sound like Gene Kranz. Okay, all flight controllers, go, no, go for landing. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle Houston, you're go for landing. Over. As flight director, Kranz oversaw the numerous teams of men and women who contributed their time, expertise, and passion to the Gemini and Apollo programs, achieving a young president's seemingly impossible challenge. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. One of the amazing things about our team is you know, we consider ourselves at, at the tip of the spear. Flight director sits in mission control and is responsible for you know, the crew that's on orbit at the time, the team that's on the ground, the spacecraft that they're flying in. You know, all of that definition of how we do that work and all that groundwork was laid you know, by Mr. Kranz and that, that early team of flight directors. Visible in almost every famous photo of mission control, Kranz became the recognizable face of a tough and competent NASA, from his flat-top crew cut to his iconic custom vests. We've had shut down. We copy you down, Eagle. Okay, everybody, T1, stand by for T1. They set up flight controller disciplines, you know, tough and competent. I love the dynamics of it. You'd come into your shift, you'd think, okay, we're gonna do A, B, and C, and at the end of the day, it's something completely different. At any point, fate can come up and shake your hand and completely change your day. And whether you knew it or not, that day was going to be the one where you make the difference. You've got to consider that's amazing to have that type of, of foresight to lay all that groundwork, be able to teach generation after generation, such that we do still have a strong culture and we consider ourselves still today, you know, the tip of that spear. And as a flight director, you would say, you know, we are the guardians of human spaceflight. And we trace our lineage, you know, to Mr. Kranz and have him to thank for that. In 1985, the Mission Operations Control Room was named to the National Register of Historic Places in recognition of its significance in American history. 1201, 1201, roger, 1201 alarm. Over the years, the Moker was neglected falling into disrepair. You ready to roll? Flight Director Kranz, however, had one last mission to complete in that room. This is a very special place, and I am passionate about the importance of restoring and preserving this room to its authentic Apollo-era configuration. I met Gene uh, my first month here at Space Center Houston, and he was very frustrated that more had not been done to, to secure the funds to restore the historic control room. And it really was one of his top priorities to conserve this space, not only for the present, but also for future generations as a learning platform. Space in Houston is the official visitor center for the NASA Johnson Space Center. So it has the ability to reach right now a, a million visitors a year, and actually with the goal of reaching two million visitors a year. So I think it's very important for us to have the um, Apollo legacy. Space Center Houston was honored to take on the challenge of raising the funds to restore the Apollo Historic Control Room. A wildly successful Kickstarter campaign, bolstered by a generous major contribution from the city of Webster, together raised the total funding level to almost $4.2 million. The city of Webster took a leadership role in restoring Gene Krantz's workplace, the Apollo Mission Control Room that had fallen into disrepair. For my past 20 years as mayor of the city of Webster, I've thought about his infamous refrain countless times because life is full of so many obstacles and failure is not an option. We're gonna get this right. Gene has been actively involved in all aspects of this project. He's personally been available whenever we called upon him for 
guidance, advice, content knowledge, reaching out to other uh, retirees who are part of the Apollo program. Dean has always been there as a consistent advocate and champion. I would like to thank you, each one of you, the 4,251 supporters of this important project. Work is currently underway on the full restoration of this national treasure. The effort is to restore the entire room. So the visitor room, the viewing room, um, restoring that, the original seats, and then the mocha itself, um, restoring the, the carpet, uh, the ceiling tiles, the lighting, the wallpaper, the ambiance in there, as well as the consoles in the front screens. It's not just about what we did in the past, but it gives us an opportunity to talk about where we're going into the future. Today, as we reflect on the legacy of legendary flight director Gene Kranz and historic mission control's unquestionable importance to space flight, we invite you to be a part of this remarkable history by supporting the restoration of historic mission control. Your generosity honors our past and inspires tomorrow's scientists and engineers to tackle the challenges of a new generation of human space exploration.